Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to this special edition, if you will, of Walkersville United Methodist Church. This is new territory for me and for all of us, but especially doing the service in this manner. I'm in my office, in case you can't tell, bringing this message, because even though we are restricted from coming to the, our church building uh, for worship service and for all activities, the ministry of Jesus Christ continues on. So we need to continue on as a church. I just want to let you know that keep checking your emails for those of you uh, of the church family because there will be information there about uh, giving and, and all kinds of other things that I don't want to take the time uh, to do now. But just let you know that uh, everything uh, of the activities of the church is, is closed uh, for the two weeks from... We made it from March 13th through and including the 28th. So hopefully, uh, the next time we can gather for worship will be uh, on Sunday, March 29th. If there's updates to be given, we will let you know that as well uh, through the email blast and through our church website and through our Facebook page. So be sure to check them out as well. And also, there will be a special recording on the, the church phone and I will be checking that uh, periodically, or if you need pastoral care, uh, in any way, you can call me on my cell phone number. With those things uh, out of the way, let us get into today's lesson, which is found in the Gospel of John, the, the fourth chapter. And I won't make you stand, normally we do for the, the Gospel reading, but for this case, I think it's okay for us to remain seated. It's taken from John, the fourth chapter, verses 5 through 14, and this is where Jesus is talking to the, a Samaritan woman. <clears throat> so Jesus came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon when a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. This is God's holy word for all of us as his children. Thanks be to God. Today I'm looking at living water versus water. Certainly water is a vital part to sustain life for us humans and for plants and animals. It covers about 70% of the earth's surface and makes up between 55 and 78% of our human body. Most experts agree that six to seven glasses of water, approximately two liters daily, is needed to maintain the proper hydration for most of us. Generally, we can survive three to five days without water, maybe some a little bit longer. But as important and vital as water is, surely we will look at the greater significance of living water and what that has upon our lives for our eternal life. Water is obviously the central theme between Jesus and the Samaritan in today's passage. But the deeper meaning besides just having water to drink, uh, I will look at it in a little bit. But this passage and this meeting together of Jesus and the Samaritan woman actually raises several questions concerning uh, the two of them. So let's just briefly look at them. First, why was a woman drawing water at the time that she was? Normally, that was a task for the end of the day. And why did the woman come to this well? According to commentary, 
the town of Sychar had its own well, and this well was a half mile away from there. Thirdly, why did Jesus ask a Samaritan, especially a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For he knew, according to Jewish law, a Jew would become ceremoniously unclean if he used a drinking vessel handed by, handled by a Samaritan, since the Jews held that all Samaritans were unclean. There are all kinds of speculations about some of these questions and the answers, but I'll leave that for another time and for another sermon topic. Our focus today is water versus living water. The first thing that the passage points out is that Jesus was actually thirsty. Now we remember that when Jesus was on earth, he was truly human and he experienced thirst and weariness and pain and hunger like any other human. In fact, we are told that he experienced all things. Um, so we don't experience anything differently than what Jesus experienced. Secondly, uh, this simple conversation quickly turned into a teaching moment. Jesus goes from talking about water to living water. And Jesus says, will you give me a drink to the Samaritan woman? And she replies, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? And then we see that Jesus says, well, if you knew the gift God, of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. So the woman seems to realize there's a sudden shift from the one subject matter to another. And in midway through her reply back to Jesus, when she says, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep, it seems that in an instance, she realized there was a difference. So it's almost like she was saying, wait a minute, where did you get this living water? So she even went from the water in the well to this thing that Jesus talked about, this living water. Well, at that moment, Jesus had her full attention and the teaching began. Like Jesus told the fishermen of Peter and Andrew, James and John, his disciples, I'll show you how to catch fish. Uh, excuse me, I'll show you how to catch people instead of fish. Jesus was always looking for fishing opportunities. And this was a perfect opportunity for Jesus to plant the seed of faith in this woman. And in case you're not familiar with the ending of this encounter uh, with Jesus and the Samaritan woman, and it wasn't covered in today's gospel lesson, the woman's faith grew to the point that she went back into the town and proclaimed to the townspeople, come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? And this is from verse 29. By the way, I encourage you to read a whole uh, account of Jesus and this Samaritan woman, which again is from John 4, verses 1 through 42. And discover not only this woman's life that was changed, but how many other people also came to believe in Jesus uh, because of her witness. And this all took place because Jesus took time to be in relationship with someone. The culture and times said that he should not be associating with, but he did it anyway. Well, back to this living water. It's a familiar phrase to the people in Jesus' time. Many passages throughout the Old Testament and New Testament make reference to it. And there again, for some uh, uh, homework, if you will, look up the, the passages if you have a concordance. Living water is equal to eternal life, and it also refers to the Holy Spirit. Jesus characterized living water as a spring of water welling up to eternal life and implies a leaping up, a uh, vigorous, abundant life. Jesus used similar wording later in John when he says, If anyone is thirsty, let them come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within them. And that's from the seventh chapter of John, verses 37 and 38. This world will never fully satisfy anything, whether it's thirst or hunger or anything else that we may desire here on earth is only temporary. In order to live, we humans do need air, water, food, and light. 
But God provides all of these in Jesus. He provides the, the breath, the, the spirit of God. And he is the bread of life. And he is the light of life. And he gives us the water of life. So all of this God offers through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and they have eternal satisfaction. Here, living water is the Holy Spirit within believers in relationship to this abundant life. Jesus tells his purpose for coming to earth, that I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That's God's desire for each one of us, a full, abundant life given to us through the sacrificial death of Jesus and by the stirring of the Holy Spirit within us. I invite us and encourage us as we continue in our Lenten season to keep on doing a self-examination. What areas can we improve upon in our faith journey to receive the fullness of life, eternal life that God has promised to us? As we live our lives, even in these uncertain and unchartered times, our faith in the Holy Trinity will get us through this current health concern and whatever trials and tribulations that we may be faced with now and in the future. We need not to be afraid because we have faith in Christ and we need to exercise that faith. Prayer, too, is a powerful tool that God has given to each one of us. So I encourage all of us to put it into action daily. We can pray wherever we are, whatever we are doing. There is no boundaries, there's no limitations, there's no restrictions. The other thing I encourage, if you're praying while you're driving, keep your eyes open uh, for safety reasons. Um, regular water has temporary benefits. God's living water has eternal benefits and rewards. God bless you all until we meet again. Amen.